Thank you for joining our webinar today. We'll be providing an overview and demonstration of Fragility's latest solution called PowerPro that's built on the new version of Microsoft Planner. Let's get started. My name is Annie Levant, and I'm with the Microsoft Gold Partner called Fragility. We've been implementing Microsoft Project and Portfolio Management Solutions and developing enterprise-level applications for over 19 years for large enterprises, including everything from engineering, construction, IT, and new product development. PMOs and CIOs typically come to us when they can't easily explain what's going on across all their projects. They don't know what resources are working and what work, and they have a hard time getting consistent reports and metrics to make project-based decisions. We're known for having a 90% on-time, on-budget track record for successfully implementing these solutions for clients. We offer services and solutions in three core areas. Deployment and consulting services, Virgility's core business. We provide professional services for successfully planning and implementing Microsoft Project Portfolio Management, including Microsoft Project Online, Project for the Web Soon to be Planner, integrating PPM with a line of business applications, and delivering strategic portfolio management solutions to support top-level management planning. Virgility also offers a set of Hammerhead pre-built software solutions and accelerators based upon 19 years of experience, including a set of Hammerhead products that provide improved access to your cloud PPM data, accelerate access to visual reports and dashboards using Power BI, connect data between your PPM system with Microsoft Teams, and extend connectivity into Active Directory to improve visibility, insight, and control over your work people and projects. New to our offerings is Hammerhead Power Pro, which is a pre-built solution crafted on the foundation of the Microsoft Power Platform and Project for the Web, along with the new planner. This offering is designed to help bring some of our lessons learned on this platform to your organization. We'll be focusing today's session on how the new planner can be easily enhanced with this solution. Finally, Progility provides post-implementation support services, including expert care, designed to assist your PMO with gaining on-demand expertise on the solution supported. We have a full online automated e-learning offering that can improve consistency and adoption for your users of your project management tools. You can learn more about all of our services and solutions on our recently updated website, fragility.com. We have upcoming webinars covering sessions on best practices for project, the new planner, Microsoft's AI engine co-pilot, and PPM process and tools. Sign up for this and all of our events following the links here or ask for a copy of today's deck. All videos from this and previous playlists are available on our best practice playlist on YouTube listed on this page. Topics range from managing your digital transformation program using PPM technologies to integrating PPM with line of business applications. Feel free to subscribe and access the library at any time and share with your colleagues. I'd like to introduce Rob Hirschman, partner here at Fragility, who will be walking us through today's content. Rob, the floor is yours. Thanks, Annie, and thanks everyone for joining today. So really, um, what Power Pro is, we're gonna be introducing that today. First, we're gonna get in and talk a little bit about what the new Microsoft Planner is, uh, how it is positioned by Microsoft and some of the different functions it has. We'll talk about the value of Power Pro and how it sits in with Microsoft's new Planner. Uh, walk through some key usage scenarios and roles. So who would use this in your organization? Give you a short solution demonstration. Also, we get a lot of questions about the Microsoft Accelerator for the new Planner. What is that? How does it operate? And how does it relate to Power Pro and Planner in general? We'll talk a little bit about the business value of the solution. Also, if you're looking for assistance on deployment training and support, what it typically takes. Let's jump right in though. So traditional Microsoft Planner was a tool that was a, really a visual task management engine that came with Office 365. It was free. And when you went to the little icon in Office 365, you went to the green P, which you see at the top here, and you went and you start building planner boards. You could share these boards with any people, stakeholders, team members, collaborate on tasks and activities. And that was about it. There's really no reporting that comes out of Planner. It's really designed to be a, a work management hub. Then Microsoft about five years ago released Project for the Web as a light project management tool that kind of sits somewhere between planner simplicity and task management and project and project online's ability to do project and portfolio management. It's really a light touch web-based scheduling tool designed for really business project management. Uh, it is built on the Microsoft Power Platform, which allows you to extend Project for the Web out and build more robust apps to meet organizational processes and PMO needs that might be out there. So the change that really occurred came in uh, November and then April of this year. Microsoft took these two technologies and merged them together into what's called the new planner. And you know you have the new planner. If you go into Microsoft Teams, you see the orange, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, the purple and blue checkboxes. That's the new brand of planner. And essentially, there are now two flavors of planner. 
There is what's called the seated planner, which is that visual task management engine, the green P, which allows you to go in. And that's the free tool in Office 365, fully integrated with Microsoft Teams. And then you have planner with what's called premium functionality. And this is the functionality that used to be part of Project for the Web. This is all the scheduling, the task assignments, and the work tracking. And this is the version of Planner that requires what's called a Planner or a Project Plan 1 license. Um, this is available today in commercial tenants. So if you work for a corporation in the U.S. here, you will have access to this as of April. And if you have the right license, you'll be able to see both the seated as well as the integrated premium functionality all in one interface. It's all been built into a Microsoft Teams interface, and that is being updated now. We're seeing the rollout of that in the traditional Office 365 web interface. So they're all going to be one and the same at this point. Um, this also includes access through that license, that Plan 1 license. Behind the scenes, there's this Planner Power app, which allows you to capture broader information and report on data beyond just the schedule. So really what we look at is how do we do that? There are certain things we can and can't do with Planner. We can go in and build schedules, track work and progress. But if we want to extend that out, to have additional more group or enterprise functionality, that's where our Power Pro, Fragility's Power Pro solution comes into play. And if we look at it, the new planner is really built on two foundational sets of functions. The first one on the left is the scheduling tool. And this is where a user can go in and build a work breakdown structure or a schedule. This is the premium version. They can take the tasks in that schedule and they will show up in a visual Kanban board. They'll be able to drag and drop those assignments around and look at them different phases or assignments. So you have the Kanban board functionality, modern project management. It also provides you with a timeline view or a traditional Gantt chart view where you can visualize the tasks and activities, the flow of the schedule, create dependencies and milestones and relationships between tasks and activities, even update that in real time through a browser. There is no Microsoft desktop client for the new planner premium. And finally, you have the ability to do what we call a people view. People view will show me the people that are assigned to my project and I can drag and drop assignments to them. Then they as end users can come in and view and update those tasks and activities. This is the Planner Premium functionality that's built into the scheduling part of the tool that's available through Microsoft Teams and now through Office 365. If you're in the government cloud, it'll still show up as Project for the Web, but you're starting to see the rollout of this now in the government community cloud. So that's happening in the October, November, December timeframe. It's coming to government, actually, as we speak, it's already in your, your commercial instances. On the right side, and kind of what's behind the scenes that Microsoft has some documentation on the website about, really is this Power App. And the Power App is something that can allow you to aggregate information beyond just the schedule. So you could put all of your projects here, all the underlying schedules are there, but other metadata about projects. You would be able to go in there on each project and start to apply different processes. You can have different workflows behind those projects. You can capture metadata about those projects, such as a description, a department, a program that's a part of all that information you would want to capture beyond just the schedule is all available in the Power App. And then you can report off all of this data. You can have dashboards that look across any and all subsets of the data that's there. So essentially, Microsoft gives you the tools through the new planner premium to build out different applications. And really, what Power Pro does, it builds on top of this. It is a pre-configured or pre-built solution accelerator to help save you time and help you leverage good practices. Instead of having to build this out from scratch, we can layer existing technology in there based on what we've seen other clients want, and you can start building from there. It really gives you a good jump start on it. It's going to save you time and money, and it has a good framework. Uh, also, it's completely customizable to meet specific organizational needs, processes, goals, and reports you might have. So what you see here is just a foundation, and through a deployment of the technology, it all gets configured for your specific needs. It also supports what we call systematic enforcement of project management processes. If you wanted to have, for instance, a standard intake process or a demand control process, or you wanted to have an issue to uh, risk to issue escalation process or a change control approval process, you can have that all built into the core Power, Power app. Additionally, it includes pre-built reports and templates, which can be very useful to getting started. It also includes, importantly, a pre-built security model. And this security model is something that natively the tool doesn't come with unless you do some work and design that. So the security model is going to make it easier for you to expose and control access to different data and functionality in the tool. And also it can support more advanced project management capabilities and functions, things like portfolio and program management. The requirements behind it are you need to have an instance of the Microsoft Planner Premium and the Power App that comes behind it that sits on what's called a Dataverse database that's automatically created. You have to have a Power Platform environment that's created once this is set up, and you have to have a Power BI workspace. Once you have all that, we can layer Power Pro in, and then you can build upon it, and it builds on the core Microsoft licenses. 
And that would either be a planner plan one or a plan free license. So you can use either, either one to really own and update your data. We're going to explain the licensing in a little bit. Again, it's available now in both commercial and government cloud tenants. In commercial tenants, it's the new planner. You may still see Project for the Web if you're in a, a government or a GCC client. And then it has a one-time cost. Unlike a lot of other organizations that will sell you a subscription where you have to constantly feed them with additional money and give them access to your environment, this is one time. So once it's in your environment and built for you, you can customize it continuously. So you know, a lot of folks ask, you know, why would I need an accelerator? Why don't I just use what Microsoft has from scratch? Well, if you want to start using the Planner Power app, if you just light it up, it's kind of going to be a blank sheet. You're going to have these different elements that Microsoft enables, but there'll be no configuration behind those. If you don't want to start from scratch to build your own or roll your own solution, this is a good way to get started and learn the capabilities of the application, get to a minimum viable product, then start to own and configure that. It's always better to start with existing co content versus starting with kind of a blank sheet of paper. If you're also interested in leveraging what we call good practices that other organizations use, you know, we've taken the 19 years of experience in deploying Microsoft PPM and applied it into Microsoft's now new planner and Power Pro. So you have a lot more expertise and experience, fields of data, calculations in there, things you would probably have to figure out over a period of time. We've thought through a lot of those things to save you some time. Also, a lot of organizations we work with, especially in PMOs, they don't have access to a lot of Power Platform resources. They may have access to the Power Platform technology, but they don't have a team of developers that are sitting there at their beck and call to say, hey, I'll build you a PMO application if you want it. Or maybe a business group comes in, like a marketing or a product group, and says, hey, I really want to use this solution. Um, you know, help, you know, I want to stand this up. If they don't have Power Platform background from a Power Apps, Power BI, and Power Automate, they're going to have a really hard time setting the system up. And you know, we can you leverage a lot of these templates and tools to actually speed that. A lot of times, a lot of organizations come and they've tried what's called the Microsoft Accelerator. They find, you know, they don't really want to re-engineer that and backward engineer that to meet exactly what they need. We'll talk about why that's, that's an option, but also what some of the limitations are that in a little bit. And really what Power Pro can do is it can give you a really good jump start on your overall deployment of the new planner and the Power App. If you're just using the scheduling part of the tool, fantastic. You can start to use that today. Power Pro really layers in when you want to start building additional functionality on top of that. Uh, you know, what functionality might that be? Well, there's a couple of different categories, seven or eight categories we typically see of scenarios. You know, one of those may be portfolio management where you really want visibility across a portfolio of projects, including metadata and processes and content and status, that's where you'd need the Power App. If you're trying to do any kind of program management, tracking of program information and projects within it, and maybe program specific attributes like program health, program schedule, maybe program budget or program value, you could capture all that in that Power App and Power Pro enables that. The schedule management, we build on what's already there by Microsoft in the new planner. So as you're building and managing your WBSs, we can use Power Pro to enable things like use of templates, pre-existing templates to start new projects and new schedules. We can, we can do things like baselining and tracking of different baseline components, which aren't natively available in the core apps. Another big area of requirement is resource management. Natively, the system allows you to assign resources to tasks and activities, and then kind of lightly load balance those. Expand that out a little bit with Power Pro to provide more capacity planning. So you can have named resources, you can have roles, you can look at availability, you can have resource demand. You know, if an organization is looking to do kind of level 100 um, resource management, it's a really great way to get started without a lot of complexity. Also, if you're looking to track issues, project risks, or do change management and chain control, this is all a set of pre-built tables Microsoft provides. We're enabling those and building components around those to make it easier based on what people would typically capture on these, these data points, and then you can report off all of it. Importantly, if you wanted to capture a project status and you want to have a snapshot of status this week versus last week versus two weeks ago, it enables storage of the status history over time in the backend database and a nice user interface for project managers to go in and update that data. The task management is really what the, the new planner premium scheduling component does, but it allows you to get views of this data and aggregate it easily to see who's working on what, or do I have upcoming tasks that are coming and, and be notified of that information through visuals. And finally, the ability to do what we call demand management. You want people to go in and put in requests. Maybe it's an idea or a request for a new project. You can have a central queue in the Power App and then put that through an approval process, manual or, up or automated. And then you can upgrade ideas and requests into formal projects very quickly and easily, converting them over. So if you're thinking about, these are some of the things I want to do in the new planner, and I don't really see those there today, that's where Power Pro can help.
if we think about kind of the different usage scenarios, different groups or types of project organizations that might use this, one would be traditional IT projects where maybe you're not using a formal project management tool. You want something simple, easy, intuitive. You don't want a lot of the overhead of a traditional Microsoft project solution might be a way to go. Been approached by a lot of marketing groups and marketing organizations that do product marketing and product development. You could actually go in and manage your project, your projects in this and have marketing managers who aren't traditional project managers use the tool, which is really the target market for the new planner. You may have business projects, maybe someone in finance or operations or human resources wants to manage their projects, but they want to capture more than just the schedule. This is a great way to do it. And finally, we're finding some organizations that do product development, product lifecycle management, that want to have it tweaked for their specific life cycle as it's different from any other scenarios. So these are some of the typical usage scenarios and groups we'd see. And we look at the users. Who would typically use a solution like this? Well, one of those would typically be the PMO. You know, a lot of PMOs, again, haven't adopted consistent tools. They're looking for something quick and easy. Maybe they want to get off, you know, these web-based tools like Smartsheet and Monday and Basecamp where they, they don't really feel real comfortable with their data being outside their Office 365 cloud. This is a really great entry point to a project management solution. Or maybe you're looking for a single point solution. You're trying to manage one large transformation program. You want it to be very easy because a lot of the people managing the projects in it aren't traditional project managers. They may be business folks or operations folks. So a PMO may, may see real good value in this. Also, your project managers, and this is talking both to your traditional project managers who would traditionally use project, or maybe you know, kind of the accidental or business project managers. These would be folks in the business that may or may not have project management background, but as part of their job, they're responsible for organizing, managing, and reporting projects. Many of these folks have never used a formal project management tool, and they often rely on lists, email lists, uh, to-do lists, maybe something in Office 365, or maybe they even use Planner today. But they're looking for something a little more robust, or even maybe they're using Excel. This is really a key usage scenario. Business users that you want using a project management tool, but you don't want to create a lot of formal project management processes and overhead around them. We also find that business managers, these would be division directors, maybe marketing managers, maybe product managers who want easy access to different projects or programs in the tool, they can very easily go in in a modern web-based interface. And finally, you know, team members and executives, people that have a stake in the project would have the ability to go in and actually look at what's going on in the project, understand their tasks and activities. It's really a solution that can be designed for different user communities, not just the project managers. So what we're going to do now is hop over into our demonstration. And if you all have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A manager. We'll take them right after the demonstration. Uh, I am now in Office 365. And you know, this being a Power App, we have different ways we can get to it. We can create a link up here. We can go right into our Power Pro environment, which is this is the project of the Planner Power App. And when I get into this, you'll see it's a very different interface than what you might have seen traditionally from Microsoft project-based tools. Coming up here on my screen. And it's going to show us a home page here when it lands. Okay. And so how the Power App is organized, we have a home page, and that home page is going to give us information based on different subsets or groups of projects. We have the ability if we're a manager to look at all of the projects we have going on. We have the ability to look at just my active projects, or we have the ability to access something called templates. So within Power Pro, we can start to build out these templates. Maybe we have a business planning project template. Maybe you have another one for software development, maybe one for a marketing template. And by taking that and starting that, you can actually take that template and it's going to come along with all the information for that type of a project, including fields of information you would capture, but even a list of tasks or activities that might go with a standard software development project. And this is really giving the requester or the project manager the building blocks to start a new project and initiate it from there. But if we go down here, you'll see we have programs. We have the ability to capture and organize our programs. We have project requests. That's the ability to capture demands or new ideas and route them through an approval process. We quickly have access to risks, any of the risks that I own or across my portfolio, issues, issues or problems that are occurring, and changes. We can track and manage and report on all our changes. Through the user interface, we also have integrated reports. So we have reports for my work and my stuff, we have reports for management at a portfolio level, looking across different groupings or portfolios. And finally, we have reports for resources and resource work. So it's all integrated into one integrated application all in one place. Starting out the process, we have the ability to go in and capture and request new project requests. And the ability to do this, someone will come in and fill in a form. So I come in and I can see my active requests. I can see all the ones that are right now inactive. Maybe we're not considering them anymore. Or I can look at the ones that are active today or that are mine. So I always have a my view, and then it can be set up with different groupings. And in these views, we can see different data. We can see the ID request, where it is in its approval process, 
the status of the request, who requested it, the sponsor, the owner, the department is being requested for, the program it may be part of, the strategic alignment that it may be aligned with, how important is it to the business, the proposed start and finish dates, but things like cost and financial or non-financial benefits as well. And again, we're leveraging PowerPro, which creates this layer, which has a pre-configuration of all this that you could build off of. So if I wanted to go in and add a new request, I would simply click new request. Otherwise, I can look at an existing request I have, maybe this AI chatbot. And now that request, at the top of each of these pages, you're going to have a workflow. And you may have one, two, three stages to get a project request approved. Maybe it goes through a draft phase where it has to go through a set of steps where I have to capture a business case, has to be proposed dates, have to capture financials, have to identify a sponsor, have to make sure it aligns with strategy. And you'll see the red stars mean that's mandatory where a request would come in and fill the information in the form. They would submit that and then it would go through an approval process where you'd go in and say, what's the approval status? This may go to a manager. Who is the approver? What is the date of the approver, the comments, and is there confirmation? And once I finish that, it will actually take this and potentially convert this over into a project and maybe even through automation, map it over to a specific project type. So you have the ability to capture all the requests. Again, people can come in here, they can add requests, and then you can manage them through a life cycle. So that whole front end part of requests and demand is all captured in Power Pro here. The plans area, this is where we're going to be capturing and viewing all of the projects we have. This, in this case, would be active projects. So let's say I had active projects here. And again, it's going to show me all the information about these projects in one place, the proposed start and finish dates, baseline, effort, hours, budget, strategic alignment. If I wanted information or I wanted to go update a project as a project manager, I would simply go into that project. So in this case, I'm in the iPads 2024-2025 upgrade project. Right at the top, what we've done is we've actually created a quick view so you can see the status of the project, the stage it's in, how far along it is, and who owns the project. Below that, you have a workflow. So for this type of a project, it may go through an initiation process. It may have to go through a management approval. This is the governance process that's now being automated so people don't just go from I have an idea to now I'm actively managing a project before it was even approved. Planning could be have I committed resources? Have I finalized the schedule? In Power Pro, we've configured baseline start and finish and baseline effort. So maybe we need to have a snapshot of where we're starting from so we can measure our progress. And these are things that are not natively in the Microsoft New Planner Power App that we've built in through Power Pro. All the way through your execution. Has the work been completed? Have we uh, completed all deliverables? Have we closed the risks and issues? And finally, out of closeout. In closeout, we can say, well, you know, it's 100% complete. Have we captured lessons learned in a lessons learned form? Have we closed out the 365 group and the team? And you can see each of these projects is made up of a series of tabs. We have a summary tab here. We're capturing all the detail and metadata about the project. Some of this data, such as start date, finish date, percent complete, the locked ones is locked because we're in a certain stage. We're in the planning stage, so that's locked. Once we get an execution, they may be unlocked or that data may be managed in the underlying project schedule by the project manager. We also set up the ability to set baseline start, finish an effort, and down here, we can do a calculation. So we know this project right now has no fifth start variance, it's on time. It has a 29 day finish variance, which means actually it's about a month late, which is not good. It has a 270 hours overage on effort, and it has a cost variance of $75,000. So why is that coming in? Because we can see here, our estimated start was the 24th. We started early, which is great our finish date, but our baseline finishes here. So again, we're finishing about a month late. That's that's bad news. And then we can capture our effort, but also our financials, our projected costs against our budget. And again, we don't have to have the schedule in detail yet, but we're capturing all this at a project level. We can then capture information on our business case, proposed start and finish, but also what is the problem we're looking to solve with this project? What's the solution? What are the benefits and outcomes? Show me projects, requests that relate to this. And we can relate requests and request IDs to projects so we can follow them all the way through their life cycle. The tasks area, this is actually the work plan that's developed either as a template or by your project or pro project leader, or your project manager, where they're going to be managing the project. And this is that new planner premium schedule we talked about where you have a grid view, you have a Kanban board where you can dynamically drag and drop activities, and even update the status of them right here. Say I'm 90% done with this task, it'll automatically save it. And then there is an audit history behind every task too. If a little drop down here, it shows me all the changes made to a task and activity. So I understand the history. Uh, within that, there is also the timeline. So if I just hover over one of these tasks, I go here and I scroll to the task. Now I can see the Gantt chart and the view and the flow of my project 
as it was built out by your project lead or your project manager. And they can very easily come in here and update it visually by dragging and dropping dates out and updating it right here as well. There is a charts view and a people view. And a people view, again, shows me the people assigned to the tasks and activities. So think of this as all the management of your work plan and your WBS integrated in with the app. You can also set goals, and a goal would be we're delivering the system, and I've got nine or nine or ten tasks. Once they're completed, then it's going to aggregate, and I'm going to complete and meet that goal. And finally, if you wanted more detailed assignments on the people you're assigning to tasks and activities, it will show you Alex is assigned to three tasks. If you wanted to manage at a more detailed level, you could do that. But this is the task capability. Within every project, it is also going to have an area where you can capture and manage risks. So I see the project manager here. As a manager, I'm going in and looking at this, captured a risk. We had a potential budget reduction. The description, the budget may be cut if this isn't complete. That has a financial impact. And all the fields here are all pre-configured. Things like the status, things like the impact, the probability, allowing you to capture a mitigation and contingency plan so you can capture all your risks in one place. You could also capture issues, which are problems. So as a project manager or a lead, I want to understand is there's an issue. The issue right here is we have a key resource leaving our team, and this was raised in the middle of August. Well, what, what was that all about? Now we have the history. It's telling us the story behind what's going on on the project. We see we have a key resource leaving the team. Sonia's leaving the team. We can't continue finish our work without an analyst. This is a resource issue we can see. The priority is critical. Its status is active. Who raised it? But also, what's our action plan? Make sure we're taking action on this. Who the action plan is assigned to? What are the due dates and a resolution? This is all conveniently built into a single application. So again, we're able to see the whole story of a project. We can also capture changes. So as changes happen to projects, it's all captured here. We see we have to, we had change came in to extend the timeline of the project due to this resource problem we have. And then we can analyze that change. We need to extend the project delivery. Is there any change benefit? No, the impact is on schedule at this case. When we do raise it, again, all the information, and these can all be customized based on the kind of information, including the decision date, the decision assignee. We have some organizations that have applied a change control process to this. So it would go through and have to be approved and have sign off. And then we have a history and reporting on all of that. Importantly, it also captures status and it can capture status snapshots. So we can see down here, we currently have one risk on the project, one active issue, one pending change. Down here, we see we have status in August. Everything was bright green, looked great. Something happened uh, in July, I'm sorry. Something happened in August where health went to yellow, schedule went to yellow, but resources moved to red. When we see, see our spend, we really want to dig into that. And as a manager now, we see the status has moved to yellow because we now have a resource issue on our project. We can see the current spend as of this date. We can see what our accomplishments and our activities are. And again, we can have capture the health and status. We need to replace Sonia. So resource health has been moved to yellow to, to red. So via Power Pro, we have these pre-configured uh, status report templates that we can capture all this data across our projects. And finally, we can view the, the work calendar for the team working days and non-working days, and also the team working on the project, all in one place. Okay, So this is all built into, again, Power Pro, and this gives you the ability, any of these forms and data on these projects can all be customized. The other area that's important are programs. A lot of organizations we work with use programs to aggregate information on projects, but programs are things in and of themselves. So we can have our cloud migration program, and we can see our cloud migration program is made up of three or four different projects that all have different statuses within them. What's really unique about this solution is we can click on the program level, and now we have information on the program. We can see the business problem the program is designed to capture. We can see the proposed solution for the program. We're gonna be doing three years of projects. We can see the potential, potential benefits of the program, and then we can capture status of that, and then look at the underlying projects and the project requests that relate to the specific program. Programs are more than just aggregations. They can actually capture unique data about the program itself. This is all built into, again, the structure of the, the new planner power app. And we expose this and we create these hierarchies in Power Pro. So finally, all the risks and issues are available here. So if I want to see all the risks across the portfolio, maybe all the issues, all the changes. But importantly, we have three levels of reporting. We have the My Work report. And this is all using Power BI. And this is for me as an end user. It knows who I am when I log in. And I can see all of my tasks on my projects. And now I can focus on just the overdue ones and just the overdue ones on this particular IPES project. And now I see there are four projects that are four tasks I need to act on because they're late. 
Again, this is my view of the world. Now it has my risks across all of this. And I can see the risks maybe by exposure or category. And I'm really just concerned about kind of the cost risks I have to manage and the cost risks just on this health assessment project. Now I'm down to just one and I can quickly link and update it. And I also have my issues, which are problems I'm managing by category. And again, I'm looking at really that the high priority issues, lack of executive sponsorship. I need to get over and address that with a project. So it gives me a view of my world. Then for a director, manager, PMO, or portfolio manager, we have portfolio views. There are tabs at the bottom, so I can go in and get a report that shows all the requests that are coming in, all the demand coming in for new projects. And again, show me all the ones that are high business impact, maybe for a certain group or department in our, our organization. Now we can see there are two requests we need to act on. We can see who they're assigned to, how long they've been sitting out there in the queue. And by the way, what's the budget and proposed benefits of those two? We can look at a pipeline view of the timeline. We can see, okay, here are all the requests we have in our queue. Here's everything in initiation, approval, planning, and execution. Gives us a nice visual. Again, we mouse over something. We can see all the data about those potential projects and active ones. We have a traditional portfolio dashboard, which is gonna bring all the standard information together. So we can very quickly see, show me, you know, I've got 11 projects, $3.3 .3 million budget. We've spent 740K. I can look at all the in-project projects. And by the way, sh show me the ones for a certain department. And now I can see a specific project here. And I'm really concerned about this health assessment project or iPads. I click on it and then I have one button. It creates a status report for me with the story and the context for that project. And I can see status move to yellow, work with Sonia's manager, accomplishments last week, what we did, upcoming activities, and all the risks and issues for this project. And all projects are all here. And we can go down and very quickly understand it. It removes all the work required for a project manager to build a status report in a PowerPoint or a template. It's going to automate that. And because these are all Power BI reports, you can automate the creation of these, have them delivered to people's inboxes. We have different views of the life cycle of a portfolio. We can look at maybe all the milestones across our portfolio and say, okay, show me everything that's overdue and all the milestones that are late, again, for a specific project we have. Now we can just focus on them and work on mitigating that or making sure we're hitting our deadlines. So the tool comes with all of these built in and you could leverage this using the new planner premium and what comes with it. And finally, there are resource reports. So if you wanna get into doing kind of level 100 resource management, we could set up a resource pool and a set of resource tables. You can start looking at who's working on what. So if I wanna focus on maybe Allie and I wanna see what Allie's work is on two of her projects, I can very quickly see her tasks and activities across those two projects. By the way, what is her progress on those projects and how many are late Right now we're overdue, and now we're just down to five or six tasks. It gives you the ability to go in and look at availability. So if I look at Allie and all of my develop developers or managers, I can see certain people like Sonny down here, he's overbooked for three months of the year. Then I look at other people who have similar capabilities, I can start to look at who's available. Or I can look at things like demand. So where have people held people's hours or demand on future work? So what is the remaining work or future work on projects? And you know, someone came in and said, I need one of your analysts or I need one of your finance people. When are they available? Well, these are the people that have work and availability right now. So really think of Power Pro as a way to easily bring this together in a single application, aggregate it all in one place and deliver it in a single user interface. So, you know, this is the solution. You know, there are different roles behind the solution and different licenses. For your project managers, they will need a planner plan one or a plan three license, which you may already have for Microsoft Project, a Power BI license, and a standard Office 365 license. If you're a business user, you're active in updating all that content on the project, that's when you need a planner plan one or plan three license. If you're a manager, an executive, or a team member going in and viewing tasks or updating information, things like that, or changing metadata, you actually don't need a planner or project license. You can use your standard Office 365 license and also Power BI for any reports. And if you're an administrator and you're running the system or setting it up, you need a plan one, three or five license, Power BI. So the nice thing is the people that are just viewing or updating tasks and content, they actually just need an Office 365 license. They don't need a planner or a project license. There's a lot of opportunities here to streamline and make your, your organization much more efficient using existing licenses. So, you know, we've had a lot of requests about the Microsoft Accelerator. Microsoft released an accelerator. That's an open source accelerator that actually builds a framework out um, designed as an example 
for how you could use the solution we just showed you today. It was released in 2020. Um, it hasn't been updated since 2020. Microsoft doesn't have an intent to update it. It's really designed as an open source example. It's not a supportable solution, and it has some design and scalability limitations. It's a great way to put it on the wall and say, the wall and say what do we want to do? Let's use this to envision what we want, but not to deploy into actual production. And we have some clients that come and say, hey, we put it in production. How do we make this work for what we want? It, it becomes a reverse engineering exercise. So what we typically do is we layer Power Pro into, an into a blank environment. It has a modifiable code base, so you can change it. It's built on a solid foundation that's enterprise ready for production use. It is updated frequently. We're always updating functionality based on what we learn from clients and building that into the next version of the solution. It's fully supported by Progility and is also scalable for enterprise utilization. We have clients that are actually using this in production use across one and multiple departments. So if you say, hey, well, let's get started with the accelerator, we'd say put that in a non-prod environment to do your envisioning, but don't deploy that because there are some limitations here. So, you know, how do you all get started? If you're interested in exploring the use of the new planner and manage your projects, you can always reach out to us. Our team can assist with helping you understand and evaluate your options, laying out a roadmap for deploying some of this technology based on where you are today. Just wanna to get started with the new plan or scheduling, that's great. If you wanna start doing the new Power App and maybe start doing Copilot and artificial intelligence, that's another capability that's built in here we can start talking about. Our contact information is listed here. And if you do want assistance, we can take you all the way from evaluation and demonstration, to requirements and design, building and validating deployment, and then adoption, transition, and support after it. So, you know, it can really make your life a lot easier by leveraging existing partners that have existing skills. Uh, but definitely reach out to us if you're looking for more information on the solution, specific use cases, maybe a deeper dive demonstration or any kind of assistance. So with that, I'm going to hand the floor back to Annie, who can get into a round of questions. Annie? Thanks for the presentation, Rob. Hopefully folks found this useful. We'll now open the floor to questions and answers. Remember to enter your questions in the questions and answer manager at the top of your team screen. Let's see if there's any questions in the queue. I see we do have one. How do I access or enable Microsoft Accelerator? It's a good question. So the Accelerator, as I mentioned, it's open source code. So you have to actually go out to GitHub and you look for the project for the web accelerator. And it is a, is a code base that you would have to install into a Power Apps environment. And then it's gonna take that Power Apps environment you have that has project installed into it. And it's gonna light up a bunch of this functionality in that sample, using that sample code. So if you actually just go to GitHub and search for it, we recommend you do this in a non-production environment that already has new planner premium or project for the web installed into it, run a test with it. Um, there's a lot of limitations around that. And if you want more information on that, we can provide you some guidance. We'll wait just one more moment to see if there's any more questions in the queue. Oh, I see Toby asks in the chat, how is the solution um, costed? Rob, if you're speaking, you're on mute. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for the question. So it is priced on a, a one-time basis where you would purchase the accelerator and then you'd be services around that to deploy the accelerator and configure it in alignment with your specific requirements. Um, and then it's yours. You can do whatever you want with it at that point. So if you wanted specifics on your environment, we can get you pricing if you just want to follow up with Andy. Here's another question from Joel. Is the new planner available for higher ed? Or is that government that you referenced? It's a good question, Joel. Yeah, it is available in higher ed. It was actually launched in higher ed in the April, May timeframe. So if you go into Teams today and you look for the planner app, if you see the purple and blue check marks, that's how you know you have it in your instance. Um, the difference for you all in education is you don't have a plan one license. So you would need to have plan three licenses, which you may already have, and that would enable access for your project managers. And then all the other users could potentially use, you know, plan three, or we can talk about uh, education specific scenarios if you're interested. 
So your licensing is a little different in EDU. So. Any more burning questions? Well, thank you all for joining our webinar today. We appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you online for our next session. Have a great day.